assassinate. They thrive on what? Stealth. Stealth. So they do two things. One, if the victim is supposed to be there, number one is the color of the shirts they wear. What color was it? Black. Black. That's one clue. Second clue, they put their body in a very, very small position so that their energy does not go out. Haven't you noticed sometimes you're walking, you go like this and you see somebody looking at you? Why? Because your energy field, being sensitive, there's energy coming out of your eyes. For example, put your hand like this. Put your hand like this. Feel? Feel about the same, right? Now put one hand down. Stare at one of your hands. Just stare at the palm. First of all, how many of you are sensitive to actually feel something on your palm? Keep staring. Imagine the center of your palm getting brighter. Okay, good enough. Lift up the other hand, compare. Anybody notice a different in sensation? Okay. So from your eyes, come out energy. When you look at someone, from your eyes as well as your energy field, it expands. Are you with me so far? So these ninjas, what they do is, they put themselves in a very, very small position so the energy field does not go out, so the victim does not detect they're there. So the purpose of crossing your arms is literally to suck your energy field in so your energy field does not mix with the environment. Now the question is, what does the black clothes have to do with anything? What color do most people wear in a formal event? Why? Aside from looking slim. <coughs> Let's get that out of the way. Aside from that, what is the purpose of wearing black? Huh? Uh, uh. Uh. You see, when you wear black, your energy field does not go out. So it's harder for people to read you. If you go to a formal event, you're supposed to make everybody think your life is perfect. You don't want people sensing that you just had a big fight on your way there or you're stressed out of your mind to get there. So when you wear black, it's hard to read. So if you're a salesperson or you're negotiating, when you look at someone and you don't want to show that, you know, you don't want to give up your... What's the word? Uh, what you're planning to do, you wear black. Because the energy field does not extend out. Clear? What else? Let's say it gets busy in the mall during Christmas here, right? Just like everywhere else. How many of you notice that some of you, over the years, it's almost uncomfortable walking through a big crowd? And before you could do it. You know why? Because your vibration changes over the years. So if you started doing more prayer, more meditation, kind of watch what you say, watch what you think, what you do, try to be a better person, whether you like it or not, your vibration changes. So as your vibration changes, you start to feel a polarity or a gap between your energy level and the people who are stressed out of their minds. <laughs> true or not true? Before, you could sit in a bar, you know, drink, smoke, cuss, complain about life, those same friends 10 years from now, you go back and meet them, you go, how come we don't have anything in common? You have changed. Now, when you're with around these kind of people on a regular basis, you notice you feel uncomfortable. Not because they're bad people, it's because you have changed. So what do you find yourself doing a lot? Because you're isolating yourself from them. You don't want to be rude, you don't want to say, oh, I can't stand you, you just say, uh, yes, how are you doing today? <laughs> You get my point? Now, why are we talking about this? If you want to get the most out of something as far as learning, you try not to cross your arms. If you want to protect yourself, you cross your arms. Clear? Now, let's see if you got this one. How many of you notice when your arms are crossed and somebody's angry at you, they actually get angrier? How many of you notice that? You know why? Crossing your arms also has a reflective effect. What does it mean by reflective? It bounces back. So, that's why you notice when your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or your spouse is screaming and yelling, and you say, yes, honey, they get worse. <laughs> because it bounces back. Let me see if you got the lesson. If you're a counselor, or you're a therapist, and you listen to people's issues so you can help them, should you or should you not cross your arms? There's only three answers. Yes, no, and I don't know. Pick one. Come on, take a stand. Huh? All right. You see, 
Let's try to understand it. When you're in front of someone and the person's emotional releasing, how many of you feel an uncom uncomfortable feeling? Because from their energy field, from their energy field, it literally is. Uh, can I use a more graphic word? They're psychologically vomiting. <laughs> you get my point. It really is like that. So if you're on the receiving end, you go, <coughs> yes, uh -huh. right. Now here's the problem. If you are a therapist, a person gets better if they're able to release and unload. So the question is, how do you balance the two? of allowing them to release, protecting yourself, and not let it splash back at them. I'll tell you in the class. No, I'm kidding, all right. <clears throat> you already have a clue. Would you like to know? Can you think of something in your mind that bothers you? Just a little, don't get carried away. Just something that bugs you, all right? Now keep it in your mind, look at me. Just look and just keep it in your mind, all right? I'm gonna do something. Are you looking? Are you holding that negative thought? Come on, it doesn't show in your face. All right, good, project. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Wherever there is hatred anywhere in this room, let me sow unconditional love. Where there is injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there is doubt, faith, despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, sadness, joy. Let every person, every being in this room be blessed by God with peace, with love, with forgiveness. Let every person, every being in this room be blessed with sweetness and with tenderness, with love and with kindness. May every person in this room be flooded with beautiful pink light and beautiful golden light. Let this beautiful pink and golden light permeate their heart, their crown, all their energy centers and their entire energy field. Let them be blessed with peace and love hope and faith, light and joy. Blessings be to every person in this room unconditionally. So be it. How's your anger? Are you still projecting negative thoughts? How was it? How easy was it to keep it in your mind? Okay. I think last night we talked about this. The prayer of St. Francis has a transforming effect. So when you're working with a client or somebody screaming and yelling at you, you just put your attention on your heart and your crown, keep showering them with two main colors, pink and gold. Pink is the color of love. Gold is the color of divine peace and divine love. So if you're talking to them, of course you have to listen. Huh? Uh huh. yeah, okay, keep talking. In between, you put your attention on your heart and your crown, you shower them with pink and gold. So what happens is their stuff doesn't go to you. Simultaneously, what they're releasing is being transformed. How many of you noticed when I was having you visualize or think of a negative thought, as I was doing this, some of you, your mind keeps getting distracted, it's getting harder and harder to focus. So if you practice this over and over again, you have to realize there's over 100 people be in this room and there's only one of me. Yet, in that very simple experiment, we were able to neutralize all your negative thoughts. 